Welcome to another Connected video interview for the 2014 annual meeting. My name is Kelsey Kettleha and I'm an engineering associate with the program development department at AICAG. Today I'm talking with Nadja Fuad, who is the keynote speaker for this year's new initiative, Women's Workplace Retention and Reentry, which is a new initiative by the Women's Initiatives Committee for AICAG. Dr. Fuad is the department chair of the Educational Psychology Department at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. She's also a researcher at the university's Center for the Study of the Workplace. Her research looks at how people make work and career-related decisions, particularly in understanding the work choices for women and underrepresented minorities. So, Dr. Fuad, your talk is based on your 2012 um, study titled Stemming the Tide, Why Women Leave Engineering. While issues related to women in the workplace um, extend across all career paths, um, I guess I'm interested in why you chose to focus on engineering in general. Well, I think there are two reasons. <clears throat> One is it's um, the, the number of women graduating in engineering are, have risen now to 20%. So there are lots and lots of interventions have gone into helping women go into engineering and stay in an engineering degree and graduating in engineering, but only 11% of engineers are women. So you know there, there's some dropout along the way. And while a lot of my early part of my career was working on helping women, promoting women to go into STEM careers, you know, if they're not staying, there's another problem there that we need to understand. And then the other piece of it, because this could be certainly true of computer science degrees and so on and so forth, engineering is a very um, concrete degree that often a college of engineering, often you know, school of engineering, so we could go to a very um, defined set of alums and, and uh, serve in it. Great. Um, and so one of the main points that you address that I, I think is really important is that this isn't just a women's issue. This is something that affects everybody regardless of their gender. Could you go into that a little more? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And I don't want to go beyond my data because I really did um, present on our data from women, from women who graduated in an, with an engineering degree. We are right now collecting the data on men, so I'm going to be able to compare to that. We, my colleague Romola Singh and I, will be able to do that comparison. Mm -hmm. But w we are saying that all of our data point to an environmental issue as opposed to fixing women, having them be more confident, having them be less afraid of math, and all those sorts of things that kind of have gotten the popular press. Mm -hmm. And so we're saying this is a good management practice, is the kinds of things we're finding, both why women stay in engineering and what are some of the factors that have them leave. It's not about, again, fixing the women, it's about fixing the environment. Right. <clears throat> right. So I guess on that note, you, you also offer a, a few steps that companies could take to make an effort to combat the issue. Yeah. Um, what are a few of the key ways that companies could um, improve the work environment for women or just you know everybody? Yeah, well, we are saying, and I'm going to quote my colleague, Romola, saying that engagement is what we call malleable. In other words, you can help to promote engineers being engaged at work. And, and the way we do that, are arguing that should be done is starting from the top that leaders say from absolutely the beginning that this is the kind of organization we want, that that message goes through the entire organization, that training opportunities are very clear, clearly um, and fairly and equitably uh, appropriated and are very transparent, um, that there are Ab there is absolutely zero tolerance for incivility and undermining and the kind of belittling that we that women described uh, as part of, in the study that we did. That there are very clear opportunities for advancement, and again, they're transparent. That everybody knows them. That there's good supervisory relationships, meaning that the uh, company has invested in that, and that there's an understanding that everybody has a life outside of work. That there are not just policies in place for work-life balance, but there's a culture that says it's okay to take those, mm -hmm. to take those benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you mentioned it a little bit, um, but as a researcher, what do you see as kind of the next steps in yeah. expanding the body of research that you put together? Thank you for asking. We are indeed studying the men, and we'll be able to really 
answer the question that everybody asks, and it's a good question. What what about the men? Is this a women's issue, or are do we see differences between men and women? And we'll have the data to do that. We're going back to the same universities and asking for their help in reaching out to their alums. And then we're doing what we call flip the question, which is, okay, so we've studied why people leave. Now let's look, take a look at why they stay. Mm -hmm. So we have a study right now, nsfengage.org, where we're trying to get at best practices so that we can say to companies, these are the things we know have kept your engineers in your, in your work environment. Well, great. Um, thank you very much for speaking with me and for sharing your thoughts with the connected community. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.